Well, hey, thanks for joining us this weekend. We are looking this weekend at the role pivotal circumstances play in growing our faith. And this is one of the unique ones where we don't get to choose our pivotal circumstances. These show up in our lives. And Jenny, I want to thank you for sharing with us this weekend a bit of your story, um, because these are the stories that are harder to share. And so none of us plan to lose a child to cancer. So take us back to those moments. Well, um, it was it was quite a shock. Um, he had not been sick and um, was all of a sudden talking about it. headaches and um, sleeping a lot. And um, just over a period of 24, 48 hours, we found out that there was a huge um, uh, tumor in his brain and that he had to go in for surgery. I think it was within eight hours of seeing that. Um, and once he went into surgery, um, we had hope that um, it was not going to be cancer. I, to be honest, I didn't even think about that. I just wanted him to get through the, the surgery fine. And um, the surgeon came out and felt like things went really well, although it went about two hours over. And then long story short, um, within two weeks of that time, we found out that he had the worst brain cancer around, glioblastoma, and that it does not usually hit pediatric young boys or young people. It's mainly in men that are older. And so circumstances were like, wow, what, where did this come from? And, um, but at that point, I just never stopped believing that God was in this and had a plan. And um, I, I trusted, I prayed, so many people prayed. Um, Alex prayed. <laughs> um, there was a, you know, Alex had some learning disabilities, and so I think back now that that was probably a godsend because he just lived every single day in a short seven months that were the best of his whole life. So, well, and in that window, probably one of the best moments was his baptism moment, uh, which came not long before his passing. Um, just what did that mean to you to see that in that moment? <sighs> It's, um, it has been one of the things that has kept me going. And if you ask me where I get my faith from is, um, remembering my son who could not see, um, he at that point had lost his sight and he was this, he was determined I'm going to get baptized. I'm going in there, but I don't want a lot of people to see me. <laughs> and so, um, when he just took that, I just knew how important it was for him to accept Christ and um, just the CSM that had been around him and supported that. Um, it was, what, 36 hours prior to him passing, and it just has given me such a sense of peace um, that he did that, yeah. and I know that he's okay. So let's go back before all of this began to take place. We're talking about how these moments have the ability to build our faith or cause us to drift away. Um, where were your, was your faith at that point? Like, what, what did that look like um, to you at that point before you began to walk through this journey? Well, um, I, would, I would have said at that time my faith was pretty strong and that I was pretty connected and learning um, a lot about um, my path and my faith walk. Mm -hmm. But now looking back at it, I was an infant. And so now six, six and a half years later, um, you never fully get past these moments. I don't know that you ever move past fully. Days get easier. Um, some days are harder. But as you think about your confidence in God now, um, has, has, when you come up against challenges that you maybe previous were like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. How do you face those? I mean, do you, do you have more of a confidence now having gone through what you've gone through over the last six years in God? A absolutely. Um, you know, some people will say, but God didn't answer your prayers. Um, he didn't answer them, you know, the way we see things. Um, I believe that Alex is um, healed. Uh, I, I prayed with um, someone who said um, 
the, the earth looks like a trash can <laughs> looking from heaven and he does not want to come back into that situation. And so um, every day, I, I truly wake up still every day. The first thing I say is, good morning, Alex, and God take care of him. Um, I, could, I walk through, I think I was telling you I was walking through Kroger the other day and one of his favorite songs came on and it just brought me to tears in the store. Um, so that still happens. But I truly believe that um, th it, this is a broken world. It was not God who did this. God probably saved it because it could have just been horrible. It, he, now that I know about glioblastoma, it could go years. It could go several surgeries. There is no way he could ever have gotten through that. And so, yes, God did save him. And, and he did what was right at that point of time. He, the world gave us cancer. Alex, for some reason, got it. And... Um, God brought us through it and brought me through it. And I just um, am so grateful. I, somebody said, you know, Alex is watching you. And so every day I'm like, God, I just have to do the best that I can because <laughs> Alex, I'm doing the best I can. So fortunately, I had gotten into a small group about a year prior. And I'll tell you what, that that being connected to this church um, being connected with a small group, um, as well as I have some outside friends that are, um, you know, strong believers, and they, that community, I think, was my saving grace, along with you know prayer and and just God listening to my tears and and screams and um, un my unbelief at times, um, just questioning. But um, I think you and I talked about the most important thing I, I kept thinking is God knows this. He lost his son. He gave his son. He watched his son suffer more than I watched my son suffer. And yet he could have changed it and he did not. He could have changed mine, but he did not. And there's a reason why. And I have to believe that. And that's how I go forward every single day.